The Babe led the Bombers to their first world championship in 1923. Great play! A no hitter! Perfect game for John Larson! Kirby Jackson hit his third home run of the game! Hayes makes the catch! The Yankees win! The Yankees are back on top! World champions for the 27th time! When the Yankees acquired Babe Ruth in 1920, sentiment in the city began to change. The Yankees were the third most popular franchise at that point behind the Giants and the Dodgers. Ruth changed things around, particularly in those first three years, 2021-22, when the Yankees drew more fans to the polo grounds than the Giants did. The Giants and the Yankees truly hated each other. And finally, you had the Subway Series everybody was waiting for. Giants and the Yankees in 36. The Yankees won it in six. The Yankees followed up that World Series title with quite the encore. The Bronx Bombers put up some ridiculous numbers at the plate. Lou Gehrig recorded the final 200-hit season of his career while batting 351 and leading the majors in walks and OPS. Second-year outfielder Joe DiMaggio led all of baseball with 151 runs scored and 46 homers. Joe D's 167 RBI is still a single-season franchise record for right-handed hitters. Catcher Bill Dickey rounded out the explosive offensive trio with a 332 batting average, 29 home runs, and 133 RBI. And this is the great period, for me, the greatest of all Yankee dynasties. You had Joe McCarthy at the helm, you had DiMaggio, you had a young players like uh, Selkirk introduced into the mix. Everybody hit. And the pitching was also dominant. Lefty Gomez and Red Ruffing finished atop the American League with 21 and 20 wins respectively. Gomez led Major League Baseball with six shutouts, 194 strikeouts, and a 2.33 ERA. Johnny Murphy, the Yankees' top relief pitcher, recorded 10 saves in 10 opportunities. For the second year in a row, the World Series in 1937 featured the New York Yankees playing the New York Giants. All games for that year's Fall Classic took place on the banks of the Harlem River, Yankees games of course being played at Yankee Stadium and Giants games being played at the Polo Grounds. The Yankees had it all working against the New York Giants. And it started in Game 1. The Yankees trailed 1-0 heading into the sixth inning where the Bombers' offense would take control as they clobbered future Hall of Famer Carl Hubble for seven runs. DiMaggio went two for four with two RBI and Tony Lazari added a solo home run in the eighth inning for extra insurance. Lefty Gomez notched the victory, pitching a six-hit complete game. The Yankees won the first two games of the World Series by identical scores of 8-1. to one. Even Yankees pitcher Red Ruffing contributed to the great offensive output of the team by driving in three runs during the second game of the World Series. In addition to his offensive output, Yanks starting pitcher Red Ruffing matched Lefty Gomez's game one outing by also pitching a complete game and surrendering just one run. Right fielder George Selkirk and Bill Dickey combined for four hits, three runs, and four RBI as the Yankees took a commanding 2-0 series lead across the Harlem River to the Polo Grounds. Game three pinned Yankees pitcher Monty Pearson against Hal Schumacher. Pearson was one out away from a complete game, but with bases loaded in the ninth, manager Joe McCarthy lifted the righty in favor of reliever Johnny Murphy. Murphy would record the final out without surrendering a run and push the Giants one game closer to elimination. New York Giants ace Carl Hubble would avenge his game one loss, pitching a complete game allowing just two earned runs. This would be the final World Series appearance for Hubble, and in the ninth inning, he gave up a solo home run to the Yankees captain, Lou Gehrig. Oddly enough, this was Gehrig's final fall classic homer. The 1937 fall classic also saw a passing of the torch of some sorts, as Lou Gehrig hit his final World Series home run in Game 4, and Joe DiMaggio launched his first World Series home run in Game 5. And that solo blast by Joe DiMaggio in the third inning would be his first of eight career World Series home runs. Lou Gehrig also added a double, triple, and RBI as Lefty Gomez pitched his second complete game victory of the series. The Yankees would claim the 1937 Fall Classic four games to one. 
winning their record sixth world championship and breaking a tie with the Philadelphia Athletics for the most titles in Major League Baseball. This would be the second of four consecutive world championships won by the Yankees. The Yankees' defense left its mark. For the first time ever, their club played the World Series without committing a single error. 1937 World Series was also the last hurrah for Tony Lazari, the terrific second baseman from San Francisco who'd been a, such an essential part of the Murderers Row teams of the 1920s. Tony Lazari was released shortly after the World Series, in which he batted 400 as his farewell to Yankee fans. Lou Gehrig would record five hits, which included a double, triple, and home run, while Joe DiMaggio, Red Rolf, and Bill Dickey combined for 16 hits, eight runs, and eight RBI. The pitching star was Lefty Gomez. He started game one and had a complete game victory. He came back in game five and had another complete game victory to clinch the series. Red Ruffing added a complete game victory of his own, while Monty Pearson was one out shy of matching his staff mates. The pitching staff as a whole pitched to a 2.45 ERA, holding the New York Giants to a measly 237 batting average. And because the polo grounds was so configured, the clubhouses were adjoining out in center field. So in the gloom and silence of defeat that was in the Giants clubhouse, they were able to hear just through one wall the Yankees celebrating their world championship. Must have been very tough for the Giants next door. In those four consecutive World Series, 36, 37, 38, and 39, the Yankees, of course, won 16 games. But they only lost three. This game that they lost to the Giants in 37 will be the last game they would lose in the series for the next couple of years.